Uh, can folks hear me now? Yes. That's better. All right. <laughs> um, so yeah, uh, I think it's probably going to be a short meeting because I think a lot of folks are flying over to KubeCon. Um, I think we originally intended to sort of cancel the meeting, but there was some mess. There was a, a couple of small uh, confusions uh, about uh, who actually had access to cancel it. Um, so yeah, I think it'll be a, a short one today, but um, just wanted to make sure that if anybody did join, uh, <laughs> that they that, that they know that the meeting does exist. It's just um, with KubeCon coming up, I think uh, most folks are currently either flying or, or prepping for KubeCon and that sort of thing. Um, cool. Uh, did it, is there anything that folks did want to uh, chat about or who? Who's going to be um, at KubeCon this year? Cool. I'll see see you there. Um, I, uh, yeah. Okay. Cool. Azra will be too. Yeah. I, I saw that Azra was giving a couple of, or I don't know how many talks, but I, I saw at least one talk. <laughs> um, actually, in fact, uh, since we do have on the docs here, and I will share that in a second. So here's this, here's this. Um, if you, so we also have a bunch of um, talks in there. Uh, Azra, do you have a link to any of your talks? Because I think it's still relevant. Yeah, um, I'm giving one talk with uh, Frederick uh, at SigsterCon. Um, okay. That's the only main talk that we're giving. We're basically giving it on um, trust routes. Uh, I'll send a link in a sec. Right. Uh, so cool. not totally salsa related, but yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, it's still you know like uh, the the six store stuff is is uh, how we're signing it, so or at least how most folks are signing it. Yeah, it's worth considering for like um, trust considerations, I guess, um, and like knowing what your implicit uh, threat model is. So, yeah, here's a talk. I'll link it up in the notes too. All right. Cool. Yeah, I'll just. I'll add it to, just because we had a bunch of it from last week's. Uh... Oh, okay, cool. So now I feel like I'm not sure if I will be able to attend Six Store Con, but now I'm feeling jealous. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that be, being part of the... Um, security uh tag in the cncf i'm now helping out with security con so oh is uh is brandon's guac talk on um i guess uh mihai's doing the as well as doing that talk I, yeah so no that that's not, it, yeah so that's mine and mihai's <laughs> okay and, gotcha yeah because i guess um yeah so originally it was going to be mine and um santiago's but Santiago is super busy with the SIG store stuff and just being a professor. Um, and then uh, Brandon wanted to, to join the other talk, but I guess because he already had one talk, they're like, no, no, only one talk per person, unless it's like a talk that's considered quote unquote, a maintenance talk. Um, and it also seems like it's kind of all over the place of how much that's actually being enforced. But um, uh, so yeah, it, it kind of passed around hands a little bit. And so now it's it's myself and, and Mihai who, who are doing that talk. Yeah. Gotcha. I, I'm pretty excited for that one. Um, if I, I can't remember, is it on Thursday or Wednesday? Yeah, it's on Thursday. Yeah. Gotcha. I might be virtual then, but yeah. Cool. Yeah, yeah. No, we, we have some cool stuff to show off there and uh, we're looking forward to uh, looking forward to showing it off. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Oh, yeah. Actually, speaking of, um, I mean, not that like, unless we have like agenda items that are like urgent to talk about. I, I know like the um, the CFP for Europe KubeCon in Amsterdam, I think around April next year closes on November 18th. Oh, wow. Okay. <laughs> Um, so pretty honestly, like surprisingly soon for a conference in mid April, but, yeah. um, <laughs> I'm thinking likely to, uh, try to organize a talk, um, with some of us doing salsa attestations for, uh, Docker containers. We're going to like, hopefully by then release 
um, some more container workflows um, and some Docker like base image builds um, as a generic type of way to create binary artifacts. So hopefully I'll have a salsa cool. talk there. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah, that, that, that'd be, uh, that's really cool. Uh, also reminded, reminded me that the CFP, I think for cloud native security con, the separate event, um, closes in, uh, early November as well. Oh, do you have a link to that one? Um, I sure. honestly like could not find it for, I was trying to find it yesterday. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it's going to be in, I believe Seattle or around Seattle. Mm -hmm. uh, no, so not that one. Uh, yeah. Oh, thought I had a link to it. Yeah, for I thought I, I'd seen it before as well, and then like for the life of me, I couldn't find it. Yeah, yeah. Um, I'm confused. There's a cloud native security con North America happening yeah, no. located with KubeCon, but this is different. Yeah, 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 this is so, yeah, because cloud native security um, con has gotten so popular, they decided to roll it out into its own um, own event. Okay, I found the link. Awesome, thank you. Yeah. Um, and so I believe, let's see, that one closes November 9th. Awesome. Okay. Yeah. I, I don't know why I had such trouble finding it. Thank you. Yeah, no, I, I just, uh, I think it's because on Google and everything else, the, 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 the 2022 like co-located event is, is sort of where the majority of the stuff is. And a few folks have, there's still actually debate about whether or not it's going to stay, um, a separate event, whether or not it's going to be a combination event, whether it's going to be, um, like, yeah, rather whether or not they're going to also have like are they going to do cloud native security con in europe or are they going to do that as a co-located event and there's all sorts of um i i, I was joking with some folks and not really joking but joking that like at this point you know the the you've seen the cncf landscape um the uh the the cncf landscape doc which is just like so much stuff in it um it's like almost as if we need a uh, a conference landscape. Like, you know, there's so many different. You know, there's there's Open 3D Con. There's the mm. Linux Foundation Summit. There's Open Source Summit. There's um, and within those summits, there's multiple uh, smaller groups. There, I'm so uh, our uh, I'm going to be giving a salsa talk in Japan um, in December for mm -hmm. open source summit japan um but uh our guac talk got um didn't get accepted but i think that's also because they didn't know what guac was yet uh, whereas oh. some of the other salsa stuff was uh yeah so so that's gonna be um um we're gonna be i'm gonna be giving a talk on that in at uh was it open source summit japan awesome okay i'll keep an eye out are you gonna go in person yeah, yeah, I'll be in person. Yeah, I'm gonna be. Well, I was already gonna be over there to um, with my uh, my wife's family, so uh, figured. Oh, might as well. <laughs> yeah, perfect. Yeah. Cool. So, okay. Uh, just also pop this in. Oops, I just saw that. That was already post pasted there. Okay, cool. Um, trying to think if there's anything else. Next week is going to be crazy, but looking forward, looking forward to the talks, looking forward to the hallway track, looking forward to catching up with everyone. Yeah, yeah. Um, looking forward as well. Uh, and yeah, the um, definitely, I think we're going to have a lot of stuff in the coming weeks because one of the things, uh, and I don't want to spoil too much from the talk, but one of the things that we definitely noticed from um, working on Guac 
and prepping for uh, this talk and prepping the demo and everything else is it turns out um, a lot of folks are not actually generating valid salsa or they're generating mostly valid salsa or they're generating also you know mostly valid s bombs and a lot of the the other problem that we're also seeing is like interop right like most folks are using if they do include a digest they include sha 256 inside their salsa but s bombs for example require sha 1 um and at least, right, you can include SHA-1 and SHA-256, but most folks are just sort of generating SHA-256, which first off also is a violation of the specification of SPDX. You need to include SHA-1. Um, but yeah, there's a lot of interesting challenges in trying to actually line up some of this data because the, ident the, like the quote unquote unique identifiers like a, like a hash or, or something like that are often... Um, weird and then also there's differences between the cpes and the pearls and yada yada and exactly how the different things are all defined is is can get very 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 complicated like we we found in certain cases like a bunch of different packages that are seen by like different things as having different pearls but if you actually look at what files are included in the package it's actually all the same files more or less um, and so th there's a lot of interesting stuff we've, we've discovered that I think is going to require a whole lot of like, I don't want to say we need to standardize as a community, but we do need to at least have some way to make interop a, a bit better because otherwise we end up with situations where one person generates an SBOM with one tool, somebody else generates their package on top of it with another tool, and then those two SBOMs are in no way able to be merged which is, which is a problem. And then I know that's a, another problem with what we're trying to do with, um, with Salsa is, you know, hey, we want to be able to say, like, if even though Salsa is not transitive, we want to be able to kind of come in and say, hey, we have all these Salsa attestations. And now we want to collect all those Salsa attestations and then generate a new Salsa attestation um, like a high, at a higher level. Um, it can get very, very, uh, yeah. It gets very messy. <laughs> I'm working on the uh, NPM uh, six store integration, and um, similarly, we're we're working with various folks to get uh, hopefully immutable identifiers to source repositories and build instructions. Mm -hmm. And we keep asking, wait, is this actually immutable? And then discovering, oh, wait, there's some additional information that we need in order to ensure that you know this resource isn't changing out from under us or you know, well, this branch name, that's not actually immutable. And I think in, in a lot of these projects, uh, the devil's in the details. And we've, we've, we've done a lot of dreaming. And then, you know, there's, there's quite a bit of work to actually make, make some of those dreams a reality. Yeah, that's actually an interesting thing you bring up, because that's something that I've been writing up some notes for an eventual Salsa proposal for... Um, so this, remember, the salsa has a couple of different things. One is like, you know, at the top level, there is like the, you know, the Intoto attestation type, right? That's a URI. And then you have the fact that it's a salsa predicate, which is a URI, which, you know, should refer to some sort of spec. Um, and then there's both the builder and build type. And I think that sort of thing is also something that we're trying to kind of see if, if there's a way to maybe standardize around so that, like, as an example, you might have it be something like the GitHub generator as let's say the build type or something like that but the actual builder is something like um or sorry the sorry the builder might be something like this github actions build type or or builder sorry oh geez but the build type or or maybe some sort of level down we want to have something like um the ability to to say like oh this is a github actions npm build or something like that that would then allow us to define and say, hey, in order to do all this stuff, this is all the information we need to capture. And some of that stuff like is, is you know, things like, hey, um, you know, capture the the hashes of, of, of these things, cache, you know, capture the this git commit ID or whatever, like whatever is required to actually reproduce, not reproduce, repeat the build um, would be very, very valuable. Uh, and because like right now, um, and this is another thing that we've discovered a little bit with Guac is most folks are just capturing like the bare minimum amount of information inside of salsa attestations. And it's, you know, it's still useful because you still have like, uh, you know, you still have the ability to say, hey, yes, this thing, you know, built this thing, but it becomes harder to 
figure out like, okay, but what did it actually build against? And what was the source? At least it claims it built against. Like it, 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 it gets harder to sort of figure some of that stuff out. And then the other thing is, um, and this was one of the big open issues that we have is like the differences between um, in Salsa, we have materials and um, the materials are just a name and a hash or sorry, a, a URI and a hash, I believe. But the problem with the URI is that it doesn't really say what type it is. So it's unclear, like, is this a flat file? Is this a, um, uh, you know, is it a, is it a tarball? Is it what, you know, what should I be doing with these materials? Like how are, you know, cause in certain cases as well, right. A, a git commit has, this is the way that they give you a checksum or a hash a commit ID or whatever. Whereas compare that with, you know, here is what the hash of um, <clears throat> a file actually is that sort of thing. Yeah. But we yeah. have a little bit, we have a little bit to go to, uh, to yeah. kind of actually fully specify it's, it's a, uh... Was it necessary but not sufficient? Something like yes. that. Yes. Yeah. But uh, yeah, we'll, we'll get there, and I'm uh, hope uh, everybody can join the uh, Guac talk because it'll be some interesting stuff there. Um, cool. Anything else? Otherwise, we can sort of end it early. <laughs> all right. I'll see you uh, all next week. Cheers. Later.